Thank you all for coming. This is the first Gnosis Ethereum meetup. Um, I actually moved to Lisbon last year in April, and uh, at that time, the crypto com there was already a crypto community, but it was a lot smaller um, than it is today. Like, who of you actually lives in Lisbon? Raise your hand. Oh, wow. So, a lot of locals here. Who of you was living in Lisbon like one year ago? Oh, wow. Okay. So there was already a crypto community. Uh, anyways, I think it's definitely clear that the crypto community has been growing a lot in the, in the last uh, 12 to 18 months. And um, there have been, of course, already before meetups, but we felt like it's good to give like, an opportunity for everyone um, who works in our industry to meet on a regular basis. So we will try to establish this as like a monthly meetup. And uh, there are lots of interesting projects in Lisbon and outside of Lisbon. And of course, right now, uh, yes, I don't, don't know even how many different crypto conferences are currently happening in Lisbon. Um, but there are many interesting ecosystems being developed. And uh, yeah, we would like to establish this meetup not only as like a Gnosis meetup, but rather like a, a blockchain meetup where we uh, invite everyone who works in our industry to present interesting projects and see how how we can build synergies together. And uh, well, it's the Gnosis Ethereum meetup, so I just want to briefly explain uh, what we do. So um, Gnosis has been around for a while, like we actually started in 2015, so many, many years ago, uh, working on prediction markets. Um, the course has changed quite a bit, like uh, if you ask people today what is Gnosis known for, then Many people will probably still say, like, yeah, there's Gnosis Safe. And some people will say there's Gnosis Chain. <laughs> Actually, Gnosis today focuses on development of Gnosis Chain. And uh, who of you has heard about Gnosis Chain? OK, great. Who of you has been using Gnosis Chain? Wow, yeah, that's very good. <laughs> uh, well, even if you um, have never heard of Gnosis Chain or, like, you think you have never used Gnosis Chain, you might have actually used it. Like uh, this here is this game you might know, the Dark Forest game, uh, which is actually running on top of Gnosis Chain. Uh, in fact, it runs on a layer two on top of Gnosis Chain. It's like a space exploration game. It's a lot of fun. I uh, hope soon we can run the next round. Um, if you have any of those, like you're also actually operating on Gnosis Chain, Poops is uh, probably the most popular application at this point. Um, like uh, where, like we actually should issue one here next time. <laughs> next meetup, all of you will get a pull up. We oh, we have one. Oh, great. Oh, like I, I should, I should know. Uh, anyways, uh, like yeah. So you can actually um, mint the pull up downstairs, uh, and you will actually do a transaction on Gnosis Chain. So all pull ups issued, they're actually all on Gnosis Chain. And most of you just don't know. Uh, but in fact, uh, everyone, and those are actually a lot of users, have been making transactions on Gnosis Chain just to get those pull ups. And last but not least, like Circles is like a universal basic income project we uh, incubated and uh, are relaunching now. And uh, when it started, it had a really interesting, like, <laughs> like uh, growth like time in the first two weeks, about 100,000 users signed up. Um, and all of those users, they were like operating on Gnosis Chain without knowing. And I guess that's also kind of how blockchain should actually be used, is like you're using the infrastructure without knowing. Like no one goes to a blockchain to use a specific blockchain. There is like always a specific reason why you go uh, and do, an in do a transaction. And um, ideally, the user doesn't even know or is not aware of what kind of infrastructure they're using. So Gnosis. Um, Gnosis Chain is not new. Like Gnosis Chain previously was known as XDAI. It was actually the first sidechain with a significant adoption, which was launched in 2018. So way before Polygon, way before Binance Smart Chain or any of the others. And it became pretty popular because uh, it actually had one differentiation factor, which was you were paying fees in DAI instead of uh, like the, uh, like a, uh, like a, um, 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 unstable currency, so it made it much easier for you to reason about the costs of a transaction. 
and it had the nice effect that if you wanted to do a payment, you could just um, yeah, use one token to do the payment itself and pay for transaction fees. And so it became very popular like as a, as a means of payment in, at events and so on. So there was this burner wallet, some of you might know, in-browser wallet, which allowed to re have a really easy onboarding experience and yeah, became very popular. Um, then last year, um, we merged with the XDAI project and uh, the XDAI network became Gnosis Chain. And with this, we also introduced one very import important change to, to XDAI, which is changing the underlying consensus mechanism. So previously, XDAI was using uh, a consensus algorithm called Aura Consensus. It's like proof of authority consensus. And we decided to change this uh, consensus algorithm with Ethereum to proof of stake. So today, there's uh, two important beacon chains running, the Ethereum beacon chain and the Gnosis beacon chain. So those two uh, consensus um, layers and we are about to merge this consensus layer now with the um, execution layers on, on Gnosis Chain. And this will make Gnosis Chain one of the most decentralized networks out there. How do we see ourselves compared to Ethereum? So we, um, well, we love Ethereum and we have been developing uh, a lot of Ethereum clients in the past. Uh, and we don't see Gnosis Chain as like a competitor to Ethereum. We saw very early on that actually transaction fees on Ethereum would go up significantly and would like a lot of use cases would be outpriced. And we saw the opportunity to offer with Gnosis Chain a network where we offer reasonable gas prices to allow a mo lot more use cases that, like we will talk about today um, and kind of extend Ethereum in the sense that um, we allow more use cases to benefit from the same underlying technology and uh, still try to double down on the values of Ethereum to provide a very decentralized network. So in fact, I mentioned we are going to do the merge soon and then Nose Chain will be a very decentralized network. Um, if you look at uh, stakers.info, we'll we actually see that Gnosis ranks right now second in terms of number of validators. So uh, right now it's about 120,000 validators uh, like validating the Gnosis beacon chain. Ethereum has around 400,000. Um, we actually aim to make Gnosis chain not the third most decentralized network, we actually aim to make it the most decentralized network. And we see a lot of value actually in offering decentralized block space. So if you look at most of the Ethereum killers, uh, most of them double down on scalability. They say like, yeah, we have the fastest transactions, we have the cheapest transactions, um, but they all make actually significant sacrifices in terms of decentralizing the network. So if you look at how many entities have to be compromised in order to attack any of those or actually significantly influence it, then there are in most cases very few which have to be influenced in order to actually, yeah, to actually have a significant influence on the network overall. So how how did we get to 100,000 validators in a short time? So what's important is number of validators itself is not actually a very important metric because, well, I can personally run a lot of them on my machines. It will not be a very decentralized network. What is more important is like how is the diversity of validators, how many different individuals and companies are running validators. And on Osis chain, uh, we have hundreds of individuals and companies running validators independently. Um, and how did we get to those numbers is because we made the requirements for anyone to join validating the network very low. So if you know how Ethereum works and you know you need 32 Ether, which at this point is still something like, I guess, $50,000, in order to run a single validator on, on Ethereum. And that obviously is prohibitively expensive or costly for, for most people, especially in less developed regions. And uh, we will come to like a graphic very shortly where you see how our validators actually distributed globally. And you will see it's pretty centralized. So we limit, we, we drop this requirement to actually only one GNO. One GNO is something like 120 or $130. Uh, and that's all you need in order to start validating the network. Um, we actually incentivized users buying their own hardware to run validators at home. Um, 
like with a partnership with DebNode. So it's really simple. You, you get this hardware, you go through a simple setup process. Uh, we even incentivize it with GNO that you can use to stake on this network. And um, yeah, and we also uh, compared to Ethereum, like in Ethereum, if you run a validator, actually, if you go offline, you're going to be punished for it. You're going to lose money. Gnosis chain, we set it differently. If you go offline a Gnosis chain, you're not losing money. You're not making money, but also not losing. <laughs> so uh, it's really made for, for anyone to participate in validation uh, of the network. Um, yeah, and our goal is to really distribute those nodes everywhere. So we, uh, through that node, we were able to distribute around 500 DEP nodes, so it's a pretty significant number. If you look at other networks, you will see uh, <laughs> very few entities actually running any nodes. And for me, it was very nice to see that there are a lot of individuals who actually believe in the benefit of decentralization and they are willing to contribute to it. And so, yeah, if you, if you have one, great. Thank you for validating the network. Otherwise, uh, you should go to that node and get one and we are still actually incentivizing it by giving out GNO. So surprisingly, many people are questioning why we even need decentralization. <laughs> like, uh, of course, like most developers, uh, they will first of all ask for like, okay, cheap transaction fees, um, how scalable is this, and everything else is kind of like, yeah, uh, we don't really care about. But in fact, if you look at even Ethereum today, and I would say Ethereum is still by far the most decentralized network today, there are um, influences which heavily lead to centralization of the network, uh, which is uh, also given through market forces that are at play at, at Ethereum. And if you look at Ethereum today, then we see that most of the, most of the, bla uh, most of the blocks on, on Ethereum are actually created using specific software in this case, MEV Boost, and if you are running MEV Boost, then you actually run a software which is OFAC compliant, so you're actually blocking transactions which go to uh, Tornado Cash, so you already have, like, actually a network where most of the entities operating the network are contributing to censorship, and we see this is a very, like, a dangerous um, direction that Ethereum is taking. Uh, it's not a incredibly neutral platform anymore. Like if you interact with Ethereum, you have to assume that actually like regulators in US have a very big influence on what can be done on this network under which conditions. And some people say like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter like because there's a difference between censorship and incredibly neutral. If you censor, then uh, it just means that you, um, like if some entity sensor, then it only means that it will take a little bit longer for a transaction to be mined. Uh, but that's, that's critical because at what level would you say like something is actually still a platform that you can use? Like if you have to wait maybe double the time than before, it might be still okay. But what if 80% or 90%, actually right now I think over 80% of the validators on Ethereum are actually censoring? How, what is the limit? Like when is this network actually still a platform that you can use. And so, yeah, I think for us, it's pretty clear that decentralized block space is a very scarce resource. Like right now, besides Ethereum, I would not consider, and Bitcoin, I wouldn't consider any network to be actually decentralized. So the block space is very scarce. Uh, and even on Ethereum, yeah, it's kind of questionable how decentralized it actually is. So for, for Gnosis Chain, we want to double down on decentralization. We want to offer really a credibly neutral platform that allows anyone to operate uh, permissionlessly and globally without having to uh, like obey the regulations of like one specific country. And yeah, so here just uh, some of the statistics from Ethereum actually. So I mentioned like um, the way how like validation on Ethereum uh, works or like how it's set up leads also, because it's pretty costly, to kind of centralization of a lot of the uh, validators. And we see most of the validators are very centered around either Europe or US. So you can also then imply that, well, if most of them are run by professional businesses in specific regions, at some point they will have to eventually uh, obey whatever regulators in those regions say. And yeah, this leads to a very geographically like centralized network. For us, it's very important that Gnosis Chain will become very decentralized, so we will actually incentivize to have 
validators in every country. So we're gonna basically pay people in order to set up hardware and run nodes everywhere um, on this planet. At least one node in every country is one uh, KPI that we have. <laughs> so I hope in a couple of months we can show you uh, this map um, with Gnosis chain validators and you will see dots in every country. So decentralization is not only a meme uh, and it's not only about uh, it's not only about um, yeah kind of uh, being very resilient it's also generally about security security is derived from decentralization uh, the way you can attack a network is by yeah owning more than 51 percent uh, or like um, kind of attacking the systems which control more than 51 percent and well obviously like the more diversified this is uh, the better it is like right now we see on ethereum there's actually very few parties which through market forces <laughs> were able to also capture a lot of the validator stake um, all of those have amazing obsacks so there's no i would say there's very 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 little risk and actually someone being able to in infiltrate those systems and, and take over any of the control but it is still a concern and of course, like uh, those single parties, they can decide on like what actually rules they're gonna follow, and this is uh, potentially a big threat to the to, yeah to the credible neutrality of, of those platforms or of, of Ethereum. And um, yeah, we will try to to really set incentives to make sure that we don't have these uh, like centralization forces on this on on Gnosis chain. Very important for security is also bridges, which are the kind of weak point of our multi-chain ecosystem. So we going, we are actually developing right now uh, a light client-based bridge, uh, which is um, the most like secure way of actually interacting between those uh, two networks, between Gnosis Chain and Ethereum. So we are, we will be able to validate the consensus of Ethereum on Gnosis Chain and vice versa, and this will like be a massive improvement uh, compared to security that we have today. Like most bridges today, they're just a simple multi-sig, like kind of a simple Gnosis safe. And yeah, like having light client uh, based bridges will allow to actually have a much, much improved security compared to what we have today. And yeah, security is very important. Like um, it's kind of a little bit like uh, what we had with Gnosis safe, like at the beginning. Very few uh, were using it because there were concerns about security. Um, but over time, like uh, people understood that this is like a secure platform to use where you can actually store your life savings or your company uh, budget. And kind of the same I would like to establish for Gnosis Chain. Like it should be the most decentralized network there to the most secure network with the most secure bridge to Ethereum. And I would like that everyone at some point will have their bank account maybe on Gnosis Chain. You can actually do all your financial transactions over Gnosis Chain. That companies actually, and we're gonna be kind of the guinea pig with our own companies, move all our funds uh, to Gnosis Chain and start paying all salaries uh, on Gnosis Chain. Do everything we want to do on Gnosis Chain because we know there's, <laughs> it's like the most secure network. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the goal that we have. Uh, and today we'll have a couple of presentations also uh, around the topic of how to make it more decentralized, how to make it more secure, and how to enable uh, financial applications on top of it. Yeah, scalability, uh, well, we obviously don't focus on scalability. However, we have been actually working with the most, uh, if, like with the team that creates the most if efficient uh, Ethereum client for a very long time, uh, which is Aragon. And yeah, we are leveraging their technology to allow like, large block space while still being uh, like super decentralized, so not compromising decentralization, just making the clients more efficient in order to offer more block space. So what is on Gnosis Chain today? Many different applications. I mentioned some at the beginning. One I'm very excited about is uh, actually Azuro. <laughs> so I think the next uh, presentation will actually be about Azuro. Uh, Dan is here, CTO from Azuro. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I don't want to take more of your time. Um, well, if you want to build something on chain, reach out to me. And with this, I would like to actually hand it over to, to Dan to present Azuro, which is uh, at this point, I think the either is the most used application or definitely one of the most used applications on chain.